What is going on guys, Rewinds here, and in this video I'm going to be bringing you guys the full spoilers for Boruto Manga Chapter 74. So, I'm going to be reacting to this as I read it to you guys. So, we're pretty much going to be having a look at all of this together for the first time. So, um, shout out to Organic Dinosaur for all the translations. Um, and it seems like I'm all the parts aren't out yet, but they will be. Uh, through the making of this video, but I think this first part is consisting of the first 17%, so let's have a look. So here we are. Um, summary and impressions for Boruto Chapter 74, titled Baptism. The cover color is Mitsuki just standing there and staring into your soul. Um, the splash text is for the sake of the one I want to protect. The subheader says a tense new mission for Team 7 begins. The side text from page 2 says after Code's assault, Konoha Village formally welcomes Ada and Damon. So, first off, I just really want to say I like that Mitsuki's getting a cover. And um, I'm pretty sure that the one he's referring to, where it says for the sake of the one I want to protect, is referring to Boruto. So, um, cool stuff there. Scene number 1. Uh, titled Totally Not Welcome, and it's going to consist of pages 1 through 7 of the manga chapter. So it says the chapter opens with Ada stepping off the train, clicking her heels. Ada is giving Damon a piggyback ride. Damon says, whoa, we're here. Ada glances to her right. Shikamaru, Sai, and two other shinobi are there to receive her. Okay, so we know who's guiding. I knew Shikamaru would be around. Um, Shikamaru says, welcome to Konoha Village, Ada, and Damon as well. We sincerely welcome you from the bottom of our hearts. Okay, so I'm wondering if that's because Shikamaru's been in love with her before, or if he's actually just saying that to be nice. Ada looks over at Sai. He immediately flushes. The shinobi next to him blushes as well. Shikamaru isn't blushing. Well, I think that answers my question. Sai's thinking to himself, she's so pretty. Mm, I wonder what Eno would be thinking about that, Sai. But yeah, um, nine more civilians have turned their attention towards her, speechless. Three are faceless, one is a woman, five are men smitten by Ada. Ada says, There's no need for such a nice formal greeting, Shikachan. I clearly know what your plans are. Well, the delivery of Shikamaru's line was pretty stiff, so I don't blame Ada for calling him out on that. Oh, that's from last chapter, of course. Shikamaru does not say anything in response. Ada says that room share is an interesting concept. We will humbly accept your offer. Shikamaru says, thanks. I expected you to say that. Damon stares back at Shikamaru. Doesn't say anything. Shikamaru then says, so that guy is Damon. He's Ada's sibling? Meanwhile, Sai is still blushing. Sai says, so, uh... You must be tired from that long trip. Let me guide you to your apartment. Please come this way. Ada glances behind her. Even more civilians are staring at her now. Really sounding like Sai's caught it bad, not gonna lie. Ada says, there's no need to trouble yourself. I won't need you to show me the way. Um, exclamation mark for Shikamaru. Ada starts levitating in the air to the shock of Shikamaru, Sai, the shinobi and a few of the civilian onlookers, Sai's blush has faded away. So I guess this is just shock here. I guess a new ability for Ada has been revealed. Seems like she can fly or levitate at least. So new reveal there. Uh, random shinobi just looking on. Shikamaru says she's floating. Damon said, my big sister doesn't like to stand out. So we'll be passing through from above. Shikamaru then furrows his brows a bit. Ada says, we'll be heading over there first, since I already know where that apartment is located. See, this ability is crazy, guys, honestly. This whole eye thing of how she can see events going on, as well as events of the past, it's honestly such a broken thing. I w really wonder um, how they're going to handle it going forward. Ada then starts flying off through the open air, conveniently roofless section of the train station. Shikamaru seems a bit more anxious now. 
Random civilian says, whoa, she's flying. Shikamaru is sweating a bit more and seems annoyed. Shikamaru says, she'll stand out as much as she wants to, I guess. Sai doesn't say anything. Amado then comes into panel view. He's lit up a cigarette and takes a puff. I was just about to mention him too, and then they brought him up because I was going to say, where is he at? He hasn't said a word. Um, but here he is. Amado says, that's not unusual. For example, when it comes to the Otsutsuki, it's a natural feat that they are able to do. It'll be the same for Boruto-kun and Kawaki as well. Soon, they'll probably be flying around all over the place. That's crazy. Uh, I think that would actually be cool to see. Um, Boruto and Kawaki getting that ability as well down the line. Um, and uh, it would be cool because not too many shinobi we knew of in Naruto and Naruto Shippuden throughout that course uh, that were flying like that. Main one that comes to my mind was uh, Onoki. Uh, Shikamaru says, I wasn't expecting to see this side of you again, Amado. You don't have anywhere else to run off to? You know, but we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about everything that you know. So that is going to be, I feel like, a part of an upcoming chapter, if not this chapter as well. This whole discussion of what went down with Code and uh, Ada to begin with, as well as Damon. Um, so some menacing go, 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 as Vex appears across the panels of a serious stare down between Amado and Shikamaru. And that's what's going to wrap up part one of the chapter. Moving on to part two, this is going to take us to about 27% of the way in into the chapter. And it's going to stop at page 11. So pretty much this is going to be pages 8 through 11 for scene number 2. And this scene is titled Catch Up Interlude. So it says the scene switches over to the room share apartment. It's sitting on top of a gently sloped hill with a few trees and more hills around it. It appears to be secluded. Kawaki is lounging on the sofa. Konohamaru and Borto are standing in the middle of the living room. Borto says, Erg. Well, they were able to prepare a nice place like this for us, at least. Especially since this mission was decided at such short notice. Konohamaru says, Actually, this property already belonged to another tenant. I shouldn't really be saying this out loud, but we had to use quite some force in order for it to get handed over to us. Core. Um... Uh... And yeah, it says right here, for people that don't know, Kor is just Konohamaru's speech quirk at the end of sentences in the Japanese version. And it says Konohamaru seems a bit vexed. Boruto is now running his hand along the wall. So you could tell tensions are a bit high, especially over here, because Konohamaru knows the stakes of the mission. And in general, they did, said they, they did say they had to use force to get it, so I wonder if that's something the anime will expand on. Honestly, they probably will. Uh, Boruto says, well, the fate of the village is at stake. All on this one big mission. A little goes a long way, don't you think? Kawaki says, Oi, Boruto, you asshole. What are you so happy about? Don't get so carried away. Boruto says, Oh, what's wrong uh, about being in good spirits? Shouldn't it put you in a good mood whenever you see such an amazing apartment? You don't have to pick a fight with me over every single little thing. Kawaki says, We didn't come here for fun, you damn brat. Don't you understand that this is a mission? I'm not gonna lie, I love how serious Kawaki takes these things sometimes, uh, especially after you watch um, some of these anime episodes and you start seeing how they're doing uh, Kawaki's characters, especially for these missions. Uh, you can tell how the buildup is for his view overall. Borto says, you asshole, of course I understand. We're supposed to live a normal life for this mission, you know? You're gonna choke if you're gonna be on edge like that all the time. And I mean, Borto's not necessarily wrong either. Konohamaru says, cut it out, both of you. What's important is whether or not you'll get along with Ada, alright? You guys are crucial. What are you guys going to do when the mood gets like this? Boruto slips off his sling backpack. Boruto says, geez. Kawaki glances back at Boruto. We then enter into a two-panel flashback from Kawaki's perspective when Momoshiki seemed to be right behind Boruto and breathing down his neck. So pretty much from the Hokage office last chapter, and Kawaki doesn't say anything. And that's what wraps up scene number two, uh, taking us to 27%. So now I'm going to cut over to scene three whenever that drops. Moving forward to part three now, 
This is going to take us to about the 46% mark of the chapter. So this is going to take us up to the first half of page 19. So scene number three, the more the merrier. So the scene shifts over to the top floor of another apartment. It's a similar style and seems to be located right next to the one that Boruto and Kaoki are staying at, a comfortable distance away. Sarada and Mitsuki are on the lookout. Sarada is resting her forearms on the railing, leaning over the balcony. She's staring off into the distance. Sarada says, yeah, since our enemy has an obstructed, unobstructed view of anything and everything because of that Senregon, I guess there's not much else we can do about things, being such obvious watch guards facing directly at them and all. I don't really know how to feel and come to grips about all of this. Mitsuki says, it's about utilizing constant vigilance. There's an inherent significance and meaning to that attitude in itself. With Ada, it's about exerting some pressure, even if it's only a little bit. That's according to Shikamaru, anyway. Sarada says, speaking of which, I don't mean to be antagonistic, but I'm honestly worried. Their conversation then gets interrupted by footsteps. Team 10 has arrived. Sarada says, eh? Shikadai says, hey, honor students, are you guys slacking off or something? Chocho says, I? Uh, or pretty much this uh, translates to what's up. Uh, Sarada says, you guys, what are you guys doing here? Inojin says, being some curious rubbernecks, as if anybody could stop our curiosity. We heard that a super pretty woman was coming. There's no way that's why they're here, right? <laughs> um... Uh, and it says Chocho seems to be getting hyped up, her clenching her fist in front of her body. Chocho says, a woman from a foreign country who has her who has set her sights on Kawaki, she'll be a perfect rival for me. That's why we came, for some reconnaissance. I don't know, I think uh, Ada's got a better chance than Chocho. I'm sure a lot of you guys would agree. Uh, Sarada says, I see. See, I think even Sarada may be doubting here. Uh, Inojin says, are you serious about what you just said? Chocho says, huh? What do you mean, you asshole, Korra? Uh, Sarada says, hold up. Go and argue somewhere else. Mitsuki then interrupts their conversa conversation. Mitsuki says, Sarada, she's here. Sarada says, eh? Sarada then whips her head around and looks off into the distance at the apartment balcony in front of them. Damon and Ada make a stylish entrance there. Chocho claps each side of her face with her hands in shock. Inojin's mouth is agape. Shikadai and Mitsuki seem a bit surprised. Sarada says, She came here by flying? Ada lands firmly on her heels. Team 10 and the rest of Team 7 look on from afar. Ada slowly gets up from a half-crouching position, with Damon still piggyback riding on her. Her eyes are still not activated. Ada then glances at the kids. Chocho and Inojin start to blush profusely. Sarada and Shikadai look at Chocho and Inojin's reactions. Chocho is sweating the most. Uh, Inojin says, uh, my heart is. Dang, so she got Sai and Inojin in the same chapter. Look at that. Chocho says, what's this? Oh my god. She's more than an angel, for real. Sarada says, get a hold of yourself, you guys. What did you even come here for? Shikadai says, damn it. I couldn't clearly see her face. Maybe that's why Shikadai and Sarada aren't you know, super in love with her either. Sarada says, but at any rate, we ought to report this to Borto and the others. Mitsuki, Sar uh, Sarada turns to look at Mitsuki. Mitsuki is staring off into space as if frozen. His eyes are wide open. No way she got Mitsuki too, right? I mean, it would make sense. I'm just saying you never really see this from Mitsuki. Mitsuki says, what is this? What's this feeling? This is the first time that I've ever felt this emotion. That's definitely a Mitsuki response right there. Uh, Sarada says, Mitsuki, are you all right? Mitsuki has started to lightly blush. Mitsuki says, I might not be okay. Damon and Ada take another glance in the kids' directions. They turn away. They then turn away, seemingly heading into the apartment. Sarada looks on. Um, so I know some people are probably not going to be a fan of this just based off how this is going already. Um, because some people seem to really hate this whole, um... I guess, ability Ada has of people making uh, others fall, you know, fall in love with her. But uh, 
it makes sense and it's been something that's been established so i honestly don't mind it as long as they're not you know spending a full chapter just talking about that straight up this is like a few pages and this is a necessary interaction just because of our ability anyway so that's how i'm seeing that for now uh anyway let's move on to part number four all right guys so part four is going to take us to page 25 which is roughly about 61 percent of the chapter so this scene is titled poor konohamaru Honestly, guys, we could probably say that's a theme of Boruto at this point. It really is, which really sucks, but let's see how they handle him here. Uh, the scene shifts back over to the main apartment where Konohamaru, Boruto, and Kawaki are still arguing a bit. Konohamaru says, well then, I'll be returning to my post, core. Alright, so this time around, the sensory team will be organized to give you guys constant support. They are on standby. You'll be able to communicate with any of the team members via Shintenshin. If anything happens, let let them know immediately. Uh, Boruto starts to sulk. Boruto says, okay. Kawaki doesn't say anything. Konohamaru says, good grief. Seriously, we're relying on you guys, Kor. Which um, I'm pretty sure is his remark that he has in the manga all the time, if I remember right. Uh, Konohamaru starts heading up the stairs, but then he gets interrupted by a voice. Sarada says, Konohamaru-sensei. Konohamaru says, is that you, Sarada? What's going on? Sarada says, Ada is right where you are. Um, Konohamaru takes a few more steps up the stairs, but it's too late. He sees a woman coming through the dip, coming through the door. Um, we then have a half-page vertical body shot of Ada, which uh, attenuates her long legs. Boruto says, hmm. Kawaki glances at her, but doesn't react. Konohamaru begins to flush with a little sweat drop. Konohamaru says, ah. The scene swaps back to the perspective of Team 10 and the rest of Team 7. They're all watching the other apartment. Sarada says, sensei? Konohamaru sensei. Kinojin says, I wonder what happened. Chocho says, should we mobilize too? After we wait a bit and see how things play out, let's get closer. Mitsuki says, yeah. Mitsuki is still blushing. He looks back at Chocho with a smitten, happy smile on his face. Um... Sarada says, no it daraba. Shikadai says, cut it out, you guys. Damn it. Sorry, Sarada. At this rate, will. Sarada says, it doesn't seem like Shikadai and I have gotten affected yet. Is that because we didn't get a good look at her? But I heard that she affects each individual person in a different way. So this could be a, a big plot point going forward. People not being affected the same. So um, maybe Shikadai and Sarada will be... A little more immune just because of that reason um that's something i'm sure they're going to expand on a little bit as you know the next few chapters come by too suddenly someone has come up behind all the kids moegi says all righty that's enough moegi is pulling up inojin by his left ear and chocho by her right ear one in each hand they're both still blushing though too moegi says what did i say about you guys not coming here chocho and inojin say ouch 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 moegi says you'll be doing Three hours of long training runs as punishments, all right? Sarada says, Moegi sensei. Shikadai says, oh shit. Moegi joins Sarada in staring at the other apartment complex. Moegi says, I'm sorry about this, Sarada, but let me put it this way. What's going on with Ada? She's already here, right? Isn't Konohamaru-chan still in there with her? Sarada says, that's what it seems like. Halfway through her communications, he stopped replying, though. Moegi says, I hope he's not making a lewd face and ogling at her. Hang in there, Konohamaru-chan. The scene then shifts back to Konohamaru. He is blushing even more profusely than before. His sweating has increased. Konohamaru is thinking to himself, uh, uh, nothing special. No big deal. I gotta get a hold of myself. I gotta calm down, Kor. Um, this is, I bet this is gonna be a funny little scene to read, though. Uh, Konohamaru has stopped dead in his tracks. Looking up at Ada from the bottom of the stairwell, Ada turns her head and looks over her right shoulder. She then activates her left eye, which is closer to Konohamaru's side. Ada says, Konohamaru-chan, is it? How lovely. It's like meeting an old childhood friend. Oh, she's definitely winning him over with that, I think. Um, some little puffs of white circular smoke are rising from the crown of Konohamaru's head now. Both of his eyes seem strained with the veins enclosing in from the outside of his sclera, his pupils have gone a lighter gray uh, than the solid black that they used to be. Konohamaru says, I, I'm, this means it, 
Uh, his facial expression seems to be more terrified with himself. His eyes then start rolling up back into the back of his head. Kon Hamru falls backwards down the flight of stairs. He lands flat on his back within the sight of Boruto and Kawaki. Uh, both, of Kon both of Konohamaru's arms are still paralyzed as if reaching up and out. They're still both lunging on the sofa. Boruto says, eh? No way. What's going on? Konohamaru sensei? Boruto rushes over to Konohamaru's side, placing his hand on Konohamaru's cheek. Boruto says, oi, sensei, jeez. I guess there's not much I can do for him. Konohamaru doesn't respond. His body is now limp. Boruto looks up the staircase. Boruto says, Ada, is that you? Don't just stand there. Come over here and let's talk. Kawaki seems unmoved by any of this. Boruto says, oi. Boruto glances up the staircase again, but then... And that's going to wrap up part four. Um, I'm going to cut over now to part five. Um, it seems like we still have about 40% of the chapter to go from here. Moving on to part 5 of the Boruto manga summary. So this is going to take us all the way to the first half of page 36, which is going to be about 88% done. So let's have a look at that. This one is titled Tussle Time and says some speed lines make their way towards Boruto heading down the staircase. Boruto can't see what is coming, uh, coming through, I think, uh, Organic Dinosaur Man. Uh, Damon has now placed his palms on Boruto's shoulders, Damon is positioning himself for a pig piggyback ride on Boruto now. Boruto and Kawaki are both surprised. Boruto says, Ku, oi, what are you doing? The panel perspective then sw uh, swaps over to a view of Damon towering over Boruto. Damon says, I'm some bastard named Damon. I'm her little, uh, I'm her little brother, you know. You're Uzumaki Boruto. Boruto then looks up and behind him. Boruto says, so your name is Damon. And you're her little brother? Kawaki says, Oi, what's up with this? I heard you brought a companion along or something. Ada's thinking to herself, That's Kawaki's voice. Damon says, So you guys are Otsutsuki, eh? But are you in the mood to kill my big sister? If you're gonna try and do something like that, I'm not gonna let you, you know? Kawaki says, What is this bastard fussing over? Is he trying to piss us off? Damon says, don't you talk to me like that with your pompous tone, Kawaki. Come at me. I'll freaking teach you some manners in a way that'll be simple enough for even you to understand. Borto says, oi, what are you guys talking about? Kawaki says, just some crazy bastard who's not worth talking to. Kawaki darts straight uh, towards piggyback Damon. And I did call this in my pred predictions video that these two are going to argue and piss each other off. Here we are, it seems like we're getting that squabble, and uh, Kawaki says the only option is dragging him off. Boruto says, oi, stop Kawaki. Kawaki transforms his right arm, intending to take a swing at Damon. However, Kawaki gets instantly repelled backwards, as if by an invisible force. Boruto says, what? Now we're on page 30, and it says Kawaki slides backwards along the floor, his arm reverts, and is back to a normal composition. Kawaki is thinking to himself, what just happened? Damon steps down and off Boruto's shoulders now. He has a smug expression on his face. Damon starts walking all over the sofa and towards Kawaki, who is still gathering himself off the floor. Damon says, my bad, sorry. This time around, I won't be using any cheap tricks. For real, let's go. Kawaki says, don't freaking screw around with me. Kawaki then activates the dojutsu in his left eye. Three triangles appear in his pupils. Damon still has a huge sly grin on his face. Kawaki attempts to attack Damon with five kunai-length black rods. Damon easily catches one of them in his mouth. As for the other rods, he has caught them deftly just with his bare hands. They clang back onto the floor. Kawaki says, what? Boruto says, no way. At that speed? Damon suddenly appears right before Kawaki. Kawaki still hasn't had a chance to get back up from a kneeling position off of the floor. Kawaki gets kicked directly on the right side of his face, connecting with Damon's right foot. This uh, sends Kawaki across the floor again. Now laying on his left side, Kawaki doesn't make a single peep. Borto then climbs up and over the sofa cushions. Borto says, Kawaki. Damon sneers back at him. Borto now lunges right at Damon. Borto says, you bastard. Why did you do that, you asshole? Now we're on page 34. 
and um, Boruto balls up his right fist and tries to punch Damon in the face. It seems that Damon is able to hold him back with his left hand as Boruto struggles to push forward against him. Um, and then it says there's a bunch of vibrating marks around their hands, so Boruto seems to be the one struggling here when Damon has his hand wrapped around Boruto's fist. Damon is, Damon is in control of the situation from uh, Organic Dinosaur's point of view. Damon is still all smiles. Boruto attempts to sweep kick Damon with his right leg. Damon uses his other arm to grab onto Boruto's left wrist and jumps up to dodge it using Boruto as leverage. Both of their arms are still connected with one another's. Damon then breaks his hold and jumps right up onto Boruto's back. Damon punches Boruto squarely in the back, knocking Boruto right into the ground face down. Um, Boruto also doesn't make any struggle noises. He's just silent. So that wraps up part five. Um, I did know that they got destroyed based off my previous spoiler videos. Um, but it seems like now we know how it, how it happened exactly. They got pissed off by him. They charged at him. And Damon defeated them, it seems like. So uh, I am interested to see what this looks like. Let me know how you guys feel about that in the comments below. But let's move on to the final part. Okay, to the final part now. Um, once again, shout out to Organic Dinosaur for all of this. Um, I know we don't get this every single month anymore, but it really is great when she does put this out for us because uh, we get a super detailed version of the chapter and the dialogue that happens before it even drops. So shout out to her. So final part over here, pages 36 to 41, titled The Aftermath. We pan over to a view of the outside of the apartment. It looks peaceful. Boruto slowly opens his eyes again. He's been laying on the sofa on his right side. Hmm, Boruto says. Boruto then sits up on the sofa as if startled by someone or disoriented. Boruto says, ha. When he glances around him, he sees that Kawaki is still passed out. He's laying on his back, but with his head resting right in Ada's lap. Ada's left hand is caressing the left side of his shaved temple. Damon is sitting at the corner of the sofa on Ada's right side, looking seemingly annoyed and bored of the events that just transpired. We then see a close-up panel of Kawaki resting on Ada's lap. Boruto turns to look straight at Ada. Ada says, I'm sorry, Boruto-kun. That turned into such a violent greeting. Boruto says, that shouldn't have been the time and place for such a violent uproar at all. Seriously, why'd you do all of that? Boruto is still sweating nervously. Damon is smiling, happy, uh, smiling and happy as always. Damon says, I was just trying to show you something in advance, you know. That's how I'll deal with you if you defy me. It won't end up going too well for you. Boruto doesn't say anything. Kawaki then slowly starts to regain some consciousness. He doesn't say anything either, but he immediately gets up with a start. He turns around to stare right at Ada. Um, Ada instantly flushes. Damon says, Oi, Kawaki. Wasn't my big sister's lap super soft? Kawaki clenches his teeth in anger. Kawaki says, Stop screwing around with me, you assholes. Ada says, Um, Kawaki, I... Ada starts to sweat a, sweat a bit. In nervousness, she stops blushing because just then their conversation gets interrupted by the intercom system. Uh, everyone seems startled by the voice except for Damon. Shikamaru is talking and he says, Boruto, this is Shikamaru. Have you already met up with Ada and Damon? Boruto says, yeah, just a moment ago I received this intense baptism Daribasa and initiation into Ada and her brother's rev revered team. I mean... <clears throat> Shikamaru says, sorry about that. I meant to properly introduce them to you guys, but they flew off so abruptly that something happened. Damon has a s huge uh, smug grin on his face. He's leaning uh, the side of his face onto his left hand so much that his face is squished and distorted upwards now. I'm telling you guys, Damon is a demon, man. You Just just look at how he's acting. Uh, crazy kid, you can already tell... Uh, He's going to be out here trolling a lot of people. I'm sure some people are going to be really mad as well that he did this, but I honestly can't say I'm super surprised just because of what he did to Code. Um, so I don't think this is too out of the question. And uh, honestly, maybe it's a demonstration that was needed if uh, you know we were to get some sort of uh, further, I guess you can say, issues between... Ada and Kawaki or Ada and Boruto later down the story. So now they know that how strong Damon is and I guess they'll be a little more on guard now. So to end this off, Boruto says, nah, nothing happened in particular. I'm hoping that we all get along with each other. Kawaki says, che, Ada then 
I mean, Ada then glances at uh, Kaokia after his reaction. We are then shown a panel of Shikamaru, Naruto, and Amado. They are in a situation room that is decorated with a few pieces of pottery. Naruto and Amado are sitting up uh, opposite from me from one another on separate sofas. Shikamaru says Amado is presently in the room with us. When it comes to those siblings, and especially regarding Damon, we have barely any intel on them at all. And that's amongst various thing, other things too. You'll be sharing what you know about everything from now on with us. Naruto says, so let's get to it. Speak up, Amado. Tell us everything in, in, in its entirety. No more secrets. Amado says, I don't mind. As long as you'll just get me, as long as you'll let me smoke a cigarette, all right? We then pan back to a shot of Boruto and Kawaki who are lounging on the sofa. Boruto says, good grief. This is such an awful mission. I'm sure a lot of um, the readers would agree with that too, because based off last month's reception, uh, to me it sounded like some people were cool with the mission and some people really hated it. Uh, to me right now, I think now that I've had more time to think about it from last chapter, I think that this mission makes a lot of sense and it is necessary. I just personally hope it's not super dragged out. Um, as for this part right here of Amado and uh, Shikamaru, now talking uh, with Naruto, this is going to be huge. I really hope this isn't another one of those teases and that in next month's chapter, we truly get some new info out of Amaro rather than him trying to find some loopholes, I guess, or not telling the full story. Next month could be a really big chapter if Amaro does truly reveal his intentions, and I'm sure we're going to get some reiterations last uh, in next month's chapter as well, where Amado's kind of just talking more about code and what just happened, uh, things we have already seen, you know, in, in the previous few chapters, but things that Naruto and Shikamaru might not know in detail. Also, I'm wondering if Sasuke is going to be around too. Um, I would assume that he would be wanting to listen to this, but he's not there as of right now. Maybe he's doing something else. Hopefully they show that as well. But that's going to wrap up the full spoilers for chapter 74 i know this is a long video but um we just had a lot of dialogue this chapter and a lot to discuss let me know what you thought of all of it though in the comments below and if you did enjoy the video be sure to hit the like button if you are new to the channel please be sure to subscribe uh, i try my best to cover um boruto news as well as a few other anime like anime and manga such as dragon ball and uh hunter hunter as well and a few others as quick as i can so um yeah, if you guys did enjoy the video, though, be sure to leave a like, uh, sub if you're new. Hope you guys have a good day or night. Whenever you guys are watching this video, I'm Rewinds, and I'm out.